Now, let's continue to talk about solutions. Last week, we discussed a new homelessness tax going into effect soon and detailed how Metro plans to spend the $250 million a year they're going to get from it. Now, it's complicated how they plan to spend this money, but it boils down to this. They hope that that money will get 5,000 people into housing and help another 10,000 from becoming homeless in the first place. Lori wrote me and asked, I spent a fair amount of time talking about homelessness issues with my family and neighbors, etc. I hear all kind of things, but I don't know what is actually true. For instance, is it true that Portland, California, and Seattle are homeless magnets because of lax laws? Or is the data on homelessness similar in other cities and regions? What is the real reason for the rise? There are lots a lot, lot, lot of different reasons, some bigger than others. Our programs and services are a factor, but we are not the only major city with progressive policies to battle homelessness. We have a map from the federal government. It shows data th uh, from 2019. We have 4.2 million people in this state, as you probably know, and in 2019, we had 15,876 people experiencing homelessness. Now, let's compare that to Texas, a famously red state. They have a population of 29 million, that's seven times bigger than Oregon, but they only had 10,000 more people experiencing homelessness at 25,848. So, is it, is it politics, red and blue? Now, I'm not saying politics don't matter, but I do want you to consider this. Even in those red states like Texas, most of the major cities vote blue. Three of the four largest cities in Texas, Houston, Dallas, and Austin, with a combined population of more than our entire state, have Democratic mayors. And San Antonio's mayor is an independent. All of those cities have extensive programs for people experiencing homelessness. But we have a much bigger problem with it here. Why? I asked the regional housing director for Metro, the person in charge of spending all this brand new tax money. I'm wondering what, why you think this area is hit so heavily with homelessness. For first of all, the housing crisis is a national crisis. It is not unique to the Northwest or the West Coast. It is being experienced across the nation. And I think one of the biggest determining factors is the rate at which rents have increased versus the incomes of folks staying flat. And what we saw in the Northwest and in our community here in the, Port the greater Portland region is a dramatic increase of rents over a very short period of time. And, and incomes have remained relatively flat. Now that is why you've been hearing so much about rent on this show. All right, in 2019, Oregon lawmakers passed a bill that caps rent increases and bans no cause evictions. It was our first ever statewide rent control bill. And right now, lawmakers are considering more legislation like extending a moratorium on evictions, like giving renters more time to pay down unpaid rent and rental assistance for kids aging out of foster care. And that's just to name a few. There's a lot going on right now in Salem. And we're going to continue to look at the solutions to our homelessness crisis. So if you have any ideas or angles that you think we should be considering, please let me know and use that hashtag, Hey Dan. Here's a specific example of that. This is one we're getting from Matthew. He said, Hey Dan, where does the proposition for the old Wapato jail site as a place for homeless people to find shelter stand? Well, it's actually been up and running as a homeless shelter called Bybee Lakes Hope Center for almost six months now. And I don't blame you if you missed this, you know, this news during the craziness that was 2020, but that's what's happening right now. Well, that and the fact that it has taken years and years to get us to this point.